Uh, okay, so let's start uh, uh, the seminar. So today is going to talk uh, Sai A. Matsubara from uh, Kobe. Each time from uh, each time we are going uh, to the east. Last time we were in uh, Germany, now going to Japan. And thanks for uh, uh, Sai for accepting uh, to give a talk uh, during the night before going to bed. <laughs> okay, so Sai, please start. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, this seminar. I'm very glad to be here. Um, so I am Saie Matsubara uh, from Kobe University. Nice to meet you. So let me begin with an introduction. Um, but this presentation is designed for non-experts of GKZ system. I, I didn't know who was coming to this seminar uh, when I was preparing this slide. So I tried to make the the whole presentation as elementary as possible. So some of you may may uh, may be uh, familiar with the, the, the uh, terminologies and notions. So in that case, just let me know, or please do not uh, uh, hesitate to interrupt me at any point. So the basic problem in the study of the, the hypergeometric system is to understand the global monotremic representation or monotremic group of a given system. But here, uh, this terminology, uh, uh, the meaning of the terminology hypergeometric system heavily depends on the context. So uh, today, uh, I can roughly define it in the following way. So uh, hypergeometric system is, uh, first of all, a holonomic system, which enjoys at least the following two properties. One is uh, the integral representation. Um, this means that any solution of uh, uh, such a system uh, admits uh, uh, has a, can be expressed as an integral of, uh, of a, a multi-valued function of elementary types, such as uh, a product of powers of polynomials or uh, exponential of uh, polynomial or something like that. And this is equivalent to saying that the, the system is a Gaussman in connection. So it's a direct image of a connection. And uh, the second property that it must enjoy is that uh, the system admits a series representation. This means that uh, if you expand the solution at a particular point in the singular locus of the system, then the, the coefficients of the series are ratios of gamma functions. And uh, there's a famous theorem of uh, Or and Sato, uh, this is Mikio Sato, uh, which states that the, this property is characterized by means of, uh, of the system of difference equations that the coefficients are subject to. So there is a, also a nice abstract characterization of this statement. And GKG system is a particular class of uh, hypergeometric system, which was uh, introduced by uh, uh, to be precise, Gelfand, uh, Kapranov, Graef, uh, Bretak, and Zelevinsky. Uh, I don't really know uh, the history, but um, uh, these people uh, definitely contributed to the uh, definition of this system. But now it's usually referred to as a GKZ system. So, uh, so this is a particular example of a, a hypergeometric system that I would like to focus on today. And here, uh, I will explain the definition later, but uh, I just mentioned that it is determined by two inputs. One is an integer matrix, and the other is a set of complex parameters. And let me uh, give some comments on the, the current state of research on monodromy representation of hypergeometric system. Excuse so, me. Uh, yes. Hypergeometric yes. system is a particular case of the GKZ, or GKZ is a particular of hypergeometric? Yeah, the latter one. GKZ is a particular case of hypergeometric oh, system. It, it is broadly defined today. But I only consider GKZ system today. So, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. So, um, um, where am I? Okay, so um, I'd like to mention uh, several uh, important parts on the study of monodromy representations. 
probably the most well-studied class of uh, hypergeometric system is the so-called rigid local system, uh, which include uh, the most classical uh, gauss to f one generalized hypergeometric system, or jordan pochham equation, and so on. Um, these are uh, a very well-known univariate uh, system, uh, but uh, these systems were classically studied uh, independently by uh, many others, but uh, Nicolas Katz introduced a nice uh, machinery of middle convolution to unify the uh, treatment, so now they are, they are called uh, rigid local systems. As for multivariate system, uh, probably Appel uh, family is, uh, is one of the most well-studied class, but uh, it is actually quite recent that the explicit monodromy representation is completely determined. Uh, there are a series of works by uh, Japanese people like Matsumoto, or, uh, Sasaki, or Yoshida, Mimachi, or uh, Goto, and so on. Uh, Right. And uh, as for this system, I, I think uh, I can say uh, the monodromy representation is well understood. And another important class is our motor Gelfand system. Um, this is a generalization of uh, Appel's uh, Lolichella's FT system. So this is characterized by uh, the, the fact that any solution is an integral of a product of powers of linear functions, linear polynomials. Uh, so the, this, the study of our Gelfand system actually is the, the, the one of the origins of the theory of hyperplane arrangement, but uh, this is also known. And of course, some uh, special Gaussman system that uh, some of you are familiar with. Uh, in the study of uh, this system, you usually use the technique of uh, uh, picard lefschetz monodromy. And the, probably the next, uh, once the monodromy representation is determined, probably the next thing you are going to do is to classify the parameters with which the system admits a finite monodromy group. And this was first studied uh, for the case of uh, gauss f one And later, uh, Bukers and Heckman made a crucial contribution to the case of generalized hypergeometrification. And less well known is the work of Van Nye and Takano on the on the finite monotone groups of Jordan Pochham equation, um, where uh, they related the finite monotone groups to uh, reflection groups. And uh, there is also a work uh, on Appel-Dolicella's FT system uh, by Dulini and Mosto, but uh, these people went beyond uh, the finite monotone. Uh, they also discussed the uniformization problems. And uh, recently, uh, my colleague uh, Yoshiaki Goto uh, posted a paper on the structure of the finite monodromy group of Appel uh, FC system. So uh, there are important works, and I am not going to make a complete list of uh, the current state of research, but uh, at least these, these systems are well studied. And in all these studies uh, of uh, finite monodromy groups, uh, the discussion is based on this, the explicit form of the monodromy representation. Okay? So first you, you, give, you determine the set of generators of the fundamental group and determine the connection matrix. And, and only after that, these people are able to uh, uh, understand the finite monodromy groups. So it is natural to ask, uh, what about GKC system? Um, to be honest, it's very far from being complete even now. And the, the most difficult problem is to understand the, generate, the set of generators of the fundamental group of the domain of definition. So the singular locus of the GKC system is a, a very well-known uh, combinatorial object uh, which is called a principal a determinant, but uh, understanding this object is uh, is a um, is a uh, is a difficult task uh, so far. Um, no one is successful in uh, computing the fundamental group of the complement of the, of this geometric object. Nonetheless, uh, 
there is something that we can prove. And I'd like to mention the work of uh, Fritz Buchers. Um, this was, uh, I don't remember when it was published, it's around uh, 2010, uh, which states that um, there is an algorithm of checking the finiteness of the monodromy group of a given regular holonomic GKG system. Well, um, okay. Um, uh, yes. So here, um, I don't, um, I don't really define, uh, or I don't really uh, give a detailed explanation of the statement of this uh, result. But um, you have a combinatorial criterion with which you can determine whether or not the system admits a finite monodromy group. So this is a uh, good news because uh, this theorem tells us uh, there are several things that we can prove without knowing the monodromy group uh, or representation. Uh, we can we can uh, derive theorems uh, on monodromy representation without knowing it. But why? Because uh, in the classical context, uh, the study of finite monodromy groups always comes after the study of monodromy representation. But in this setting, it is not yet achieved, but we can say something about the monotone group. So this is the based on the combinatorial structure of GKG system. And um, I'd like to illustrate how this kind of mechanism works by focusing on the conjecture due to Fritz Buchers and Carlo Vecho. Uh, one of them is a, a participant of this seminar. Um, so here is the conjecture. Um, so when the parameters are real, uh, very generic, whatever it is, I would like to, uh, I will uh, define it later, but uh, under some generosity condition, uh, GKG system admits a monodromy invariant Hermitian form. Uh, this is not so difficult to prove, but the second part is more essential, and uh, which states that the, the signature of this monodromy invariant Hermitian form has a combinatorial description in terms of the regular triangulation. And the proof is based on the uh, two basic properties of hypergeometric system, integral representation and series representation. So this is what I would like to discuss in this talk. Uh, so is there uh, any questions so far? Is it okay? Can you hear me? Uh, is there no uh, connection problem? I mean, on the, of the no, internet. Okay. Yes? No problem? No problem, okay. man, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, so here is the definition of GKG system. So I, I'd like to start with the definition. So small n and capital N are positive integers, and C is a set of complex uh, parameters. And capital A is a small n by capital N integer matrix, such that uh, the column vectors of which generate the ambient matrix. And I consider uh, uh, capital N uh, tuples of uh, complex variables denoted by Z. Then ZKZ system is defined by as a, as a system of linear partial differential locations of this type, um, where first uh, operators EI is a particular linear first order partial differential operators. And the second one, uh, this square sub U, uh, is labeled by uh, kernels of the left multiplication by A. So the explicit form of these uh, differential operators are not really important here. Uh, interestingly, in many papers uh, dealing with GKG system, uh, they always write this definition, but they don't use it to prove something. So. Here, uh, all you need to remember uh, is that this system is depends on uh, capital N variables. So the, the number of rows is the number of variables. And uh, the second operator is uh, labeled by the kernel lattice. So this will play an important role later, this kernel lattice. And um, the first theorem I uh, mentioned is the, the fundamental theorem due to Adolson. Uh, which states that the GKG system is always holonomic without any restriction on the configuration A and parameters. 
And uh, the second part uh, is, oh, sorry. Um, and moreover, um, the GKG system is regular holonomic uh, if and only if there is a dual vector phi such that the column vectors of the configuration lie in the primitive hyperplane, which does not go through the origin. So the latter part is due to Hota and Schutz Water, Fernandez Fernandez. Uh, the latter statement is particularly nice because uh, we can characterize the regular, regular hol holonomicity uh, by means of a combinatorial uh, condition, which is uh, very easy to check. So today, uh, throughout this presentation, I'd like to uh, assume that GKZ system is uh, always regular holonomic. Okay. So, in case you are not familiar with the, uh, the definition, uh, let me give you the simplest example. This is related to the Gauss 2 f one um, Then the, the matrix is associated, uh, the configuration matrix is given by three by four uh, integer matrix of this form. And you have uh, three uh, complex parameters, C1, C2, C3. Uh, in the classical uh, setting, Gauss has uh, three complex parameters, alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, and these uh, parameters, C1, C2, C3, are linear combinations of them. So uh, at this stage, uh, if you're not familiar with GKZ uh, uh, point of view, uh, you may think it's strange because the number of independent variables is four here. Yeah? But uh, obviously, Gauss hypergenetic system is a univariate system. Uh, but if you have a look at the particular solution, uh, you see uh, what is going on. So here uh, I give a particular example of a solution of this system, right? You have a product of uh, powers of monomials uh, in front of a series. And this series essentially depends on one variable, which is a particular ratio of uh, variables. So this is uh, called the torus reduction of the uh, variables and you can actually reduce the number of variables to one okay, by uh, considering this new independent variable. But um, uh, it is better to uh, introduce uh, three other variables to make it more symmetric and to find a hidden combinatorial structure behind, GK, uh, behind hypergenetic system. That is the viewpoint of uh, Gefan Kaprano and the Levinsky. Um, so, uh, um, this is just a remark, but uh, if the parameter is suitably generic, the GKG system is irreducible and the rank is, as in the classical case, is equal to two. Um, rank doesn't change uh, even if you change the parameter in this case, but uh, irreducibility uh, fails if uh, this certain uh, generosity condition is violated. And uh, as I said, uh, it is a particular class of uh, hypergeometric system, so it must enjoy integral representation. And in this uh, particular case, uh, we, uh, it is uh, expressed in the following way. So VZ is uh, a complex plane set minus three points, defined in this way. So if Z1 to Z4 are in the generic position, uh, this uh, this variety VZ is just the complex plane set minus three points. And I introduce a local system uh, given by uh, determination of this uh, particular multi valued function, which is denoted by capital Phi. Then uh, the homology group uh, of uh, first homology group of VZ uh, with coefficients in L is canonically isomorphic to the solution space. So this is one formulation of the, the Gauss. Uh, Manning connection. And uh, so the system, uh, we can say that any solution that meets an integral representation of a particular form. And the, the, the proof of the conjecture is based on uh, this type of uh, point of view. Namely, uh, we compare through this isomorphism, we compare uh, these two uh, vector spaces. And uh, the solution space admits. Uh, natural combinatorial structure 
uh, which was uh, uh, studied by Gerfan Kaplan and Zelensky. So this is uh, this is really uh, heavily used of the. He this makes uh, heavy use of the, the uh, structure of GKZ system. Uh, but on the left hand side, we have a geometric structure such as intersection pairing or homology loops. So if we can interpret the combinatorial structure uh, in terms of uh, this geometric structure, we get some information on the monodromy group or representation. So that's how it works. So let me uh, begin with the, uh, discussing the combinatorial structure of GPC system. As I said, um, this Gauss system, Gauss hypergeometric system, is realized as a GKZ system with four independent variables. And I said uh, the number of variables is always reduced to one. Uh, it can be formulated in a more uh, sophisticated way. Um, so I define LA uh, to be the kernel of the left multiplication by A, which is uh, generated by the single vector 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. Uh, and, and it is canonically embedded in Z4. Right? So from this lattice, we take dual and spectrum uh, to obtain uh, one dimensional torus canonically embedded in four dimensional torus. And this four dimensional torus. Uh, uh, can naturally be regarded as, uh, as the domain of definition of the GKZ system. And this subtorus corresponds to the reduction of variables. So here, uh, this uh, information of sub lattice, so 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, all has already appeared in the previous slide. So here, in this uh, expression of the series, uh, you have a special variable, Z1, Z4 over Z2, Z3, and it can be read off from this uh, information, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. Nice, but um, so uh, by the way, Torus is uh, open Riemann surface and it has a unique compacti compactification, which is nothing but a projective line in this case. And obviously this is a, a trivial example of a toric variety, right? And the, the this toric variety is associated to uh, one dimension of fun, uh, which consists of three cones, uh, positive line, negative line, and the origin. But once a toric variety is given, uh, it carries a natural structure of natural uh, multiplication by the torus, and uh, it gives you uh, the orbit decomposition of the variety, and uh, zero dimensional orbits are just called uh, fixed points, and in this case, it's uh, they are precisely zero and infinity. And by the classical uh, framework of uh, Gauss to F1 uh, system uh, or equation, we know that uh, solution space admits a special basis of solution. So from any spaces uh, at zero and infinity. And uh, GKZ machinery tells us it is always the case. So let me uh, formalize the previous construction. So I'm given a configuration matrix A <clears throat> from which I can define the kernel lattice. And um, there is a standard uh, combinatorial method of defining a special fun called second fun, right? In the dual lattice, uh, tensor, uh, the real uh, number field. Then uh, we can associate it to it a uh, uh, toric compactification. And in the same way, we can consider a set of torus fixed points. Then um, at each torus fixed point, uh, we have a special basis of solutions uh, consisting of hypergeometric series. But uh, these hypergeometric series are controlled by the combinatorics of a regular triangulation of the convex hull of the column vectors of the configuration. So, so this is the important part and this enables us to compute a lot of uh, important quantities. So I don't think I have time to define uh, the secondary fund uh, in general. So let me just uh, give you one example uh, 
which is uh, Apple's F1 system. So from the viewpoint of GKG system, Apple's F1 corresponds to this particular configuration. Uh, so you have four by six integer matrix. Right? So the number of variables is this time uh, six, but the rank of the kernel lattice is two. So the rank of this kernel lattice is the essential number of variables. And this is compatible with the classical point of view. In the classical setting, Apple's F1 system is a hypergenic system with two variables. And uh, yes, uh, this notation uh, is a bit strange, but uh, this means that the column vectors of this six by two matrix uh, generate the lattice. And the figure of the convex hull of the column vectors uh, looks like this. So it is a triangular prism. Um, so a priori, um, each column vector of this configuration is a four dimensional vector, but they lie on the primitive hyperplane, which does not go through the origin. So actually the convex hull is a three dimensional figure. So it's a triangular prism. And the secondary fun in this case is uh, given by uh, this particular uh, uh, figure. So you have as many as six uh, open cones, D1 to, to D6, and the uh, dual lattice tensor are real uh, numbers. And this corresponds to the uh, blowing up of the product of projective lines at, uh, at the origin of them at the infinity. And um, so uh, this, then the general theory of uh, uh, toric variety tells us there are six torus fixed points and this matches the, uh, they, they are uh, described in a very concrete way uh, because uh, P1 times P1 is already a toric variety and the torus fixed points are just given by uh, zero, 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 infinity, infinity, zero and infinity, infinity. So they, they are just products of uh, uh, poles, uh, northern poles or southern poles. Okay? But uh, by blowing up, you insert projective line to uh, these points. And each projective line has, uh, has two poles, zero and infinity. So the number of torus fixed points increase by two. So it's four plus two uh, torus fixed points. But uh, each torus fixed point has a combinatorial interpretation, which is called the regular triangulation. And um, I'd like to take uh, T1 as an example, which consists of T, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, six, two, four, five, six. Okay. And each uh, four tuples of numbers corresponds to a, a convex hull of corresponding vertices. For example, one, two, three, four here is, uh, is the convex hull of uh, vertices one, two, three, four. And uh, you see uh, here is a simplex. One, two, three, four is a simplex. And two, three, four, six is uh, in the same way a simplex. Two, three, four, six, you have simplex here. And two, four, five, six is also simplex. Uh, two, four, five, six is also simplex. And they are not only simplices, but they all together form a subdivision, polyhedral subdivision of uh, this triangular prism into simplices. So it is a triangulation. So that is why I, I, I say it's a regular triangulation. Uh, maybe say, uh, you have yes. also an arterial description of the discriminant locus in general. Sorry, what, what, what? what? What you have a combinatorial way of describing the discriminant locus, for example, in um, time. Well, in this particular case, yes, but uh, in general, it's principal a determinant, and uh, the Newton polytope for principal a determinant is described in a combinatorial way, but the the close formula of uh, the discriminant locus is. Uh, as far as I know, uh, not well known, I think. 
and it's a very hard question uh, in general uh, even if the uh, configuration is not so big the uh, number of terms of the uh, discriminant locus or principal a determinant to be more precise uh, can be thousands or yeah okay. can be thousands so that's quite complicated okay uh, did i answer your question yeah, but what it is in the case in this case this uh, this uh, p1 times p1 is it, it is the right term no oh in this case we have a integral representation so and uh, it is associated to a, a, a products of powers of linear polynomials so when two uh, roots of these uh, polynomials coalesce uh, it's the singular locus okay so it's easy to compute Okay, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So um, let me, um, uh, but, um, okay, so I, uh, out of nowhere, I just started to uh, talking about the uh, combinatorics of triangulations, but I explained it, explained it because it is closely related to the study of uh, GKG system, the solution of GKG system. So, uh, uh, namely, I can uh, construct uh, Frobenius-like solutions from a given regular triangulation. Okay. So let me fix uh, regular triangulation T. Then uh, it defines a, a non-canonical uh, embedding of the fundamental group of this uh, big torus into the complement of the singular locus of the GKZ system. Okay. This is not canonical because to each loop uh, in the left-hand side, you must associate a associate a way uh, to avoid the singular locus so it's it's not canonical but uh, it is uh, 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 it is uh, determined by this uh, regular triangulation right and then uh, uh, if you remember that uh, uh, this uh, uh, the, the complement of the singular locus uh, uh, is the, the natural domain of the, the solution, the natural definition domain of the solution of the GKZ system. Um, we have a monodromy representation, and uh, by uh, uh, composing this inclusion with uh, the monodromy representation, we have a reducible representation. Um, so I assume a technical condition for the sake of simplicity. Uh, this is not uh, necessary in general, but uh, for simplicity, I assume that the volume uh, in the following, uh, the volume of each simplex is equal to one for any uh, sigma. So this is a normalized volume. The uh, Lubeck measure is normalized so that the, stand, the volume of the standard simplex is equal to one. And I assume that all the simplices have uh, volume one. So whatever it is, it's a technical condition for the sake of simplicity. And, and under this condition, uh, we have a irreducible decomposition of the solution space into one-dimensional vector sub subspaces. So this, uh, where phi sigma as a particular uh, uh, hypergeometric series, or uh, this is called a gamma series in the context of uh, GKZ system. So this is in a sense, um, uh, weight decomposition in the, uh, representation theory and uh, this uh, big torus plays the role of uh, maximal torus in a sense uh, but um, well that's just uh, it looks similar but uh, um, so these uh, series behaves well with respect to these uh, representations uh, these reducible representations um, for example uh, uh, again I'd like to take uh, up as a fun system as uh, and uh, simplex one, two, three, four. Then the series corresponding to this uh, simplex is given by a, a product of powers of monomials times uh, Appel's F1 series in two variables. So again, uh, you have a particular ratios of uh, independent variables. And Appel's F1 series, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have uh, space to write down the, the, the the explicit definition of this series, uh, but uh, you can find it uh, uh, in any book dealing with the uh, multivariate hypergeometric system. Okay, so 
uh, here the leading term uh, uh, from the reading term you see that this is a simultaneous eigen vector of the, uh, the the fundamental group of the big torus and um so I define a six dimensional vector uh, B1234 uh, by means of the simultaneous eigenvectors. Uh, so simultaneous eigen, sorry, simultaneous eigenvalue. Um, simultaneous eigenvalue of the mono, of the uh, uh, of the monodromy is actually the, the exponential two pi i of this uh, uh, vector uh, of this vector, but uh, well, uh, whatever. I define it in this way. Good. And now uh, I am able to uh, formulate the uh, conjecture of Buchholz uh, uh, and uh, Bershaw in a precise way. So given the regular triangulation, uh, as we saw, we have a set of simultaneous eigenvalues. And uh, here's the terminology. Uh, we say uh, C is very generic with respect to this triangulation if these uh, eigenvalues do not have any integral entry except for zero for any signal. So in the previous example here, we want to three, four, uh, these uh, entries are non-integral. Then the conjecture states that uh, when parameter is real, and very generic with respect to a regular triangulation T, then the signature of the monodromy invariant Hermitian form is given by those of uh, uh, product of uh, values of sine function at uh, each entries of uh, these uh, eigenvalues, simultaneous eigenvalues. Um, um, so, uh, I did not mention it in the previous slide, but uh, actually uh, there is a, a close formula uh, of computing uh, B sigma from a given regular triangulation T. Uh, so in the previous slide, uh, B is explicitly written in terms of the linear combination of uh, parameters you want to see for. So this is always the case. And uh, so you can make this formula more explicit. So it, it is a closed formula in terms of parameters and uh, regular triangulation. Can you tell us a little bit about the Thermitian form? Uh, I, uh, is it, is it, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, just from the, the description of the JKZ system, uh, one can immediately write down uh, what uh, it, there is such a Hermitian form, because a priori from the differential equations, uh, I can't see if there is a Hermitian form uh, invariant by the by the monodromy. Ah, okay. So I, I will explain it. Um, yes, uh, the answer will be given uh, in the in the uh, well uh, in a minute, I think. But um, the answer is uh, if the system admits a, a Gauss-Mannin representation or integral representation, it admits a monodromy invariant Hermitian form. Okay. But of course, parameters should be real. But I, I will explain it. Yes. Okay. So yes, the, the first part of the conjecture is that it exists. And the signature is given by this, uh, the signature of these uh, uh, values. That's the precious statement. OK? Uh, so OK, and uh, yes, I posed the technical condition on the volume of the simplex. Uh, this is some technical condition, but this is uh, uh, no longer needed. Uh, it's not necessary. I, I, I just wanted to make the uh, exposition as simple as possible. And uh, the, the conjecture of uh, Bukers and Bershaw should be uh, modified slightly, but uh, essentially the same. So I'd like to focus on this technical case. Uh, right, so let me uh, answer the question of Jose. Um, so I assume that uh, GQZ system is regular holonomic, uh, by which I mean the, uh, uh, so without loss of generality, uh, I can assume uh, that the first row of the configuration matrix consists only of unity. 
uh, we can change the, the basis of the lattice, uh, the ambient lattice. Right, and I introduced uh, three notations. One is the Lowland polynomial, uh, HZ, uh, X. Um, so here, uh, the coefficient of uh, this Lowland polynomial is regarded as the independent variable of the GKZ system. And uh, the exponents or the powers of X uh, of this Lowland polynomial is uh, determined by the given configuration matrix. And uh, our ambient space Bz is the uh, complement of the vanishing locus of the uh, Lowland polynomial okay, inside uh, torus. And I consider a particular local system uh, given by uh, determinations or branches of uh, this particular multi-valued function, hz to the power uh, minus c1, and h2 c2 uh, two times uh, xn cn, uh, which is denoted by capital phi again. Then uh, this, uh, this basic uh, that um, GKZ system admits a particular type of integral representation. This is very well known. So, if the parameter is non-resonant and C1 uh, uh, does not belong to the, the ring of integers, um, this is a bit uh, technical, uh, this sounds a bit technical, but uh, essentially a uh, uh, non-resonance condition is equivalent to the irreducibility of the uh, system. So this is not just a technical condition, but uh, it's something essential. Um, but anyways, under this uh, irreducibility condition or non-resonance condition, uh, we have a canonical isomorphism between homology group of uh, Vz uh, with coefficients in this local system L with the solution space. And the correspondence is explicitly given by uh, means of integral along a uh, uh, homology class. So, uh, I'd like to uh, use this uh, particular um, integral representation to deduce uh, information on the monodromy group, or monodromy representation. And now, uh, with this setting, I can uh, simply answer the question of uh, say now. So, uh, I consider the monodromy representation of the complement of the singular locus of GKZ system to the solution space. So, this is the global monodromy representation, not uh, local monodromy representation. Okay? Um, and uh, I said uh, solution space is canonically isomorphic to the homology group. So the fundamental group acts on this uh, homology group. Uh, now so, uh, I suppose that C is a real vector. Then um, I see that the particular uh, subfield of the uh, complex number field uh, obtained by uh, adding uh, exponential to pi i uh, uh, of uh, each entry of C, so C is a vector, and uh, this is a strange notation, I'm sorry, but uh, I see you understand the meaning of this. Uh, uh, this particular field is uh, closed under uh, complex conjugate. Okay. And uh, if you remember the definition of our local system L, okay, L is defined over this field, so L, uh, remember the definition of this uh, local system L. So all the exponents CI are now real. Uh, and, uh, and oh, sorry, it's not related, but uh, yeah, yeah. By the definition of this local system, uh, we see that it is defined over this field. Then uh, uh, we have an identification of the dual local system and the complex conjugate of the local system. So if uh, so this complex conjugate is uh, understood as a complex conjugate of the of the uh, representation of the fundamental group. Okay. Uh, so I fix a complex conjugate of the complex number field. Then uh, this is well defined and there is a there is an identification between uh, dual and uh, the complex conjugate. And with this setting, um, I can uh, I can state uh, 
I can prove the first part of the conjecture, uh, but this part is not so uh, complicated. So when n is odd or even, or, or I can say uh, when n minus one is even or odd, and parameter is non-resonant, uh, okay, uh, then the homology intersection form between homology group and its complex conjugate defined by local intersection numbers is a non-degenerate monodromy invariant Hamishan form or a monodromy invariant skew Hamishan form defined over this subfield. Um, so this is the answer uh, uh, to the first part of the, the conjecture. But um, so you, you may think it's uh, almost trivial because uh, uh, if uh, it admits a, uh, if the system admits a Gauss money representation, uh, yes, it, you always expect that the monodromy, uh, sorry, the intersection pairing gives you the monodromy invariant Hamishan form. But the difference from the standard con context is that BZ, the fiber, is non compact. So there is a difference between homology group and Borel Mua homology group. And usually a homology intersection form is defined as a perfect pairing between homology group and borel mua homology group. But uh, under some assumption, so under the irreducibility assumption of the system or uh, under the non-resonance assumption and the parameters, they are the same thing. Uh, uh, the canonical morphism from the homology group to borel mua homology group uh, is an isomorphism. So with the aid of this isomorphism, we can uh, construct a monodromy invariant Hamishian form of the homology group, which is isomorphic to the solution space. So uh, the solution space admits a monodromy invariant Hamishian form. So, so far I uh, obtained uh, the following commutative diagram. So th there is an isomorphism between homology group and solution space. But at torus fixed points, solution space admits a particular, a particularly nice uh, basis of solutions. So this is kind of weight decomposition. And uh, it is now uh, natural to uh, ask uh, there is a corresponding basis of uh, homology classes. And of course, uh, this uh, morphism integration is an isomorphism and uh, they exist. But uh, the question is whether or not we can uh, uh, compute the uh, Hermitian, uh, sorry, uh, we can compute the uh, intersection form with respect to these bases. And uh, uh, this correspondence, integration is a highly transcendental correspondence. And uh, usually uh, we cannot hope the concrete form of this uh, uh, domain of integration. So imagine the problem of uh, reconstructing the domain of uh, integration from a given value of an integral. Uh, it is not always easy to solve, but at torus fixed points, uh, we have, uh, we can do it and it is achieved uh, by myself and my uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Goto. So I, I don't have time to mention the, that work, but uh, Yes, um, and we can derive some information. So first of all, uh, these uh, bases enjoy an uh, orthogonality property, by which I mean if uh, uh, these uh, cycles correspond to different uh, simplices, uh, they are orthogonal to each other. And uh, this is not so difficult to prove because uh, 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 this gamma sigma uh, corresponds to a simultaneous eigen value v sigma but if these simultaneous eigenvalues are different then uh, the monodromy uh, uh, sorry the then the intersection form should be zero because it is monodromy invariant but uh, after monodromy uh, they are eigen eigen uh, vectors so you have to multiply some uh, eigenvalues but it should be the same thing so it's gives you the, this equality. And the most important part of the story is that the diagonal part can be evaluated in an explicit way. And 
it is precisely the constant times uh, the the quantity which appeared in the conjecture of uh, Bukerson for sure. Uh, I do not really know how uh, Bukers and uh, Vesho uh, came up with the with that conjecture in the in the context, but uh, from the viewpoint of intersection form, it is uh, it naturally appears. Okay? So uh, I say I can say that uh, the conjecture is true, and we even have a closed formula of the monogamy invariant Hermitian form because uh, we can evaluate the homology intersection form in a closed in a in a precise way. So this gives a gives you a closed formula of the monotony invariant Hamishian form. So uh, I'd like to uh, conclude this uh, presentation with uh, giving uh, you uh, an example. Uh, it's again related to Apple's F1 system. Um, it's because uh, this system is very easy to to handle, but uh, the result is about the general GKC system. So let me take the same regular triangulation as before. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, six, two, four, five, six. Then uh, we have uh, uh, three set, of, uh, three uh, simultaneous eigenvectors. So from this uh, concrete expression, uh, yes, I can say uh, 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 I can uh, determine the signature of the monodromy uh, invariant Hermitian form uh, because I have a formula. Um, but let me do some experiments. So uh, the parameters with which the uh, Apple F1 system has a finite monodromy group uh, is classified by Ethabot uh, five years ago or six years ago. I don't know. And uh, there are uh, 10 possibilities modulo integers. Right? And if the monodromy group is finite, uh, of course, uh, the the signature of the monodromy invariant Hermitian form is definite, so it should be three zero or zero three, uh, and it is indeed the case. But uh, of course, I use the formula of Bukers uh, uh, and Vesho, and uh, you can conclude that yes, it's always positive definite, and of course. Uh, this computation does not depend on a particular choice of a regular triangulation. I, I just chose uh, this uh, regular triangulation T1, but uh, whatever regular triangulation you may choose, uh, you have the same result. But uh, in the previous uh, yes, slide, here, this value, product of sine function, this value may change, but the signature does not change. So that's the point. And um, uh, so that was about the uh, finite case, but of course there are uh, some other interesting cases and I take an example of a hyperbolic metric. So if the parameter is given by six over five, two over, over five, two over five, three over five, then the, uh, by the same formula, we can conclude that the signature is one, two, and uh, this particular uh, example or parameter came from the paper of Lin and Mosto. Uh, and they also show that when parameter takes this, uh, this particular uh, value, uh, the associated Schwarz map uh, gives a uniformization of the domain of definition of uh, Apple original CFD. And uh, they also gave a formula of the uh, signature of this. Uh, of the monodromy invariant Hermitian form, but uh, we can also recover the, their result. And so, so the formula uh, given by Bukers and Vesher is uh, compatible with the classical literature, and it is approved now. So, uh, so, so, uh, yes, this is what I wanted to explain. And uh, I think the uh, this. Presentation is only about the beginning of the study of the uh, global monodromy group of the GKZ system. Uh, but I hope uh, 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 people make progress uh, in, in, in the study of uh, uh, global behavior of high pressure functions. Uh, so thank you very much. Muito uh, obrigado. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we have uh, two sessions of questions. First official one shall record it. <laughs> uh, maybe if uh, I, uh, uh, a place that people are interested to, uh, which the signature of her mission forms up here, when you have uh, really of geometric origin, you have a family of varieties, you have the cohomology, and uh, the signature appears, the, the hot numbers of the variety appears as uh, in the formula of the signature of the Hermitian form. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, even so that you were talking about Gaussman in connection, but I think uh, still uh, you didn't write any family of varieties. Uh, and I was, uh, no. I was uh, trying to see if there is a kind of even, uh, let's say, hot structures, some hot numbers, uh, in oh, your context, yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but there is a variety, uh, sorry, uh, there is a family of uh, varieties uh, which is given here. It's not compactified here, but here, yeah, uh, VZ is a kind of uh, varieties in this context. Uh, sorry. Uh, can, oh, so, sorry, I, I should share the slide. Uh, how can I? Oh, did you see the slide? Yeah, we see it. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. Bring your slide. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think, uh, yes, hot structure is a uh, finer uh, information than the, the signature of the monodromy invariant emission form. But, um, so that's another approach. Uh, and actually, uh, if you take the, uh, if you take the, so here I have a, a homology intersection form, but if you take the Poincar dual of this uh, homology intersection form, uh, what you have is uh, the so-called L2 cohomology intersection pairing. So you replace each uh, homology group by a L2 uh, homology, cohomology group, and this pairing is a standard uh, polarization of, of the... But, okay. uh, but here uh, it's strange because in the description of uh, uh, Hodge theory, you don't have uh, uh, regular triangulation. So I, I wonder if it's uh, related uh, somehow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I mean, uh, the description of uh, some kind of hard structure or missed hard structure in this case, I don't remember if it is, is it done or? Uh... Uh, I think Hodge number is computed by Terrasoma. Okay. And parameter, parameters are all rational, of course. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. But okay. uh, it, it's, not, it's not the closed formula of uh, each uh, the dimension of uh, each Hodge numbers, but it's like the closed formula of the generating function of, of Hodge numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Any other question? So, if there is no question, let's thank the speaker. We will be still for the second session. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.